New Westminster, Coquitlam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to uh, start off my remarks, first of all, by uh, congratulating the Minister on her new post. Uh, and I should also mention, Mr. Speaker, I'll be um, sharing my time with the member from Western Arctic. Mr. Speaker, the, the Minister talked about developing a world-class tanker safety regime for marine transport. The Minister, uh, she talked about job creation. And the Minister also mentioned that she would reach out to groups on the West Coast who are concerned about marine safety. So, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to touch on those three things in my remarks. And I'd like to perhaps point out a few other things that uh, she should take under in consideration when thinking about this bill. Mr. Speaker, first of all, if she is serious about developing a world-class tanker traffic and, and a, a marine safety system, she should think about reversing the cut that was made to the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station. It was shut down, uh, and that was as well as the proposed MCTS, or Marine Communication and Transport Safety Centers, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically to British Columbia, after a huge public outcry on the West Coast to both those, the shutdown of the, the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station and the planned cuts to, to these safety centers. There has been a huge public outcry on, from all British Columbians, Mr. Speaker, about this act. And I want to specifically talk about the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station. Um, Mr. Speaker, this Coast Guard Station is recognized to play a significant role in marine safety. Last two decades in Vancouver, one of the busiest ports in the country, um, it has played a critical role in saving lives. It's estimated now that the closure of this station will double response times. And as you know, Mr. Speaker, in emergency situations, time means safety. It means saving lives. So when we're talking about the doubling of response times because of this act, this closure to the station, I really have to question, is the minister serious about developing a world-class safety system, a marine safety system? And specifically, again, I, I focus on the West Coast here. Um, I think the, the Harper government's short-sighted cuts to the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station will put British Columbians at greater risk. Uh, the, the Kitsilano Station is one of the busiest stations in the country, and this cut will unnecessarily increase risk to British Columbians. The Coast Guard is, an essential, is essential for marine safety on BC's coast, and the Conservatives' action that, that uh, shut down not only the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station, but the Marine Communication and Traffic Service Centers across BC is very alarming. Now, Mr. Speaker, we've heard a lot from many groups have, that have spoken out about the, the, the cut, this cut, and, and the risk to this, but it doesn't seem that the government is listening. So I'm asking the new minister if she will actually listen. Now, uh, this is, uh, as I mentioned, one of the busiest stations, or it was one of the busiest stations in the country. Over 300 calls a year, distress calls, uh, went into this station. It's no longer there. Now, I just want to read what the uh, Vancouver Fire Chief had to say about uh, this, this closure. And there were some actions by this government to uh, fill in the blanks of what is left by the, uh, the, the Kitts Coast Guard station. He says the temporary uh, seasonal services announced for the harbour are no comparison to the professionally trained and equipped officers of the Coast Guard. This closure has put the safety of our harbour and waterways at risk." Unquote. Mr. Speaker, this is alarming coming from uh, the Vancouver Fire Chief uh, talking about the, the closure of this station. Now, I'm going to come back to uh, the third point that I, I raised, which is the outreach, that the minister said she was uh, willing to talk to groups and reach out to groups on the West Coast. Um, I'm going to come back to that, Mr. Speaker, and, and ask uh, specifically uh, for, some, for her to talk to certain groups. But let me first turn to uh, tanker traffic off Canada's West Coast. Mr. Speaker, this is a critical issue in British Columbia 
as it is, of course, in Canada. Uh, specifically looking at the north coast of Canada or British Columbia, I want to mention I, I have a private member's bill that looks at banning tanker traffic off BC's north coast. And Mr. Speaker, there's a reason for that. And there's a reason why other uh, members have called for a, uh, a ban of tanker traffic uh, off the west coast. Uh, these are treacherous waters. These, the, the weather can be uh, huge in terms of the waves, the wind, uh, the unpredictability of, uh, of the weather systems that roll in. Um, it's also an am amazing ecosystem, a marine ecosystem. These are reasons why we have to be extremely careful as to how much uh, we want to open that coast up for marine traffic. Uh, now, it's, it's, uh, it's very important that we look at the safety of those men and women that are operating these large tankers or vessels or fishing uh, vessels that traverse our seas. And I want to point specifically to an example of the Queen of the North. And that's a perfect example, Mr. Speaker, where we need to have increased safety and we need to have our standards as high as possible uh, so that we uh, can ensure that the men and women, the officers that traverse our seas in, in large ships, are safe. And Mr. Speaker, the Queen of the North, which sank off BC's north coast, is a prime example of just how treacherous these waters can be and just how important it is to have high safety standards. Mr. Speaker, I also want to mention the ocean ecosystem, um, specifically in this area, because we all know, and I think many Canadians and actually people around the world know, of the Exxon Valdez spill. And that caused irreparable harm to the marine ecosystem in the, the North Coast. And Mr. Speaker, those impacts were felt for decades. In fact, some say that there are still impacts today uh, from that spill. Mr. Speaker, it just takes that one spill to make a difference, or one accident to make a difference in the lives of men and women, of the officers, whether it's, a, again, a, a fishing vessel or a large ship, uh, or even some of the recreational uh, men and women and, and, and families that use uh, these waters uh, to recreate in, Mr. Speaker. We need to have the best safety and the best emergency response that we possibly can when it comes to dealing with, uh, with the, the ecosystem in the north or, in fact, the, the uh, treacherous waters that do happen in terms of when the, the weather uh, does happen in that area. Mr. Speaker, Canada is definitely not prepared for a major oil spill. Uh, and I would add especially a bitumen, which is what, what is being proposed by this government uh, on the north, in northeastern British Columbia, north across, uh, with the pipeline uh, that's being proposed, the Enbridge project is to put uh, an 1,100 kilometer twin pipeline, uh, and it's to traverse uh, bitumen, which is a very heavy substance, a tar like substance. And if that is filled into a tanker and there is a spill off the north coast, I can't imagine what kind of damage that will do to our, our ecosystem, our marine ecosystem. But I also want to point out that we are not prepared to re respond to that, uh, a spill of that nature, Mr. Speaker. This is a, a heavy substance. It's not uh, uh, something that we're used to or familiar in terms of response and cleanup. And BC is woefully unprepared for that ma major oil spill. So how do we know this, Mr. Speaker? Well. We know this because we've not even done a risk analysis in terms of the closure to the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station, to the MCTS stations off the west coast, um, and, and the, uh, the impact that they'll have on marine safety. I, I asked, Mr. Speaker, I submitted a, an access to information request, and in a letter dated May 10th, 2013, and I'll just want to quote the, uh, the, the response that I, I received, Mr. Speaker, the Canadian Coast Guard has advised that there is no standalone risk analysis document. Mr. Speaker, this is unacceptable. We need to have a standalone risk analysis that can be vetted and shared with all parliamentarians, all uh, interest groups that are concerned about marine safety. So it's unacceptable that we do not have a risk analysis document. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I just want to mention 
the, the Minister asked about reaching out or, or mentioned she would reach out to the groups on the West Coast concerned about marine safety. Well, I hope she consults with the Province of British Columbia, the City of Vancouver, the, poli the Vancouver Police and Fire Chiefs, the uh, Jericho Sailing Centre and so many others that are concerned about marine safety. In fact, if she does consult with them, she will find it's unanimous that they want that centre, the Kitsilano Coast Guard Centre, open, that they want the MCTS stations opened, reopened, and they want the reverses that uh, this government has done in terms of the, the cuts to resources to the fisheries and oceans and to Coast Guard they want them changed. They want to see an increase in resources, an increase in jobs, not the reverse. So I challenge the Minister, if she's serious about a world-class safety system, marine transportation safety system, that she starts with reopening the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Kestjoe Kamantaev.